Vigilant Broadcasting, the station of opportunity, presents The Chronicles of Doing Too Much with your host, Angel Riley. Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to tonight's edition of the Chronicles of Doing Too Much. I am your um, favorite host, the one and only Angel L. Riley, and I am so excited that you guys joined me tonight. Oh my gosh, it is only Wednesday, it is hump day, but let me tell you, it has been a whirlwind of a week. (laughs) So Monday, I dropped the bomb and talked about the power move that um, um, I'm currently making, and I said with these last few episodes, because on Monday I also announced that um, we're going to take a minor break during the summer um, as as I continue to move forward in um, this power move that I'm making, um, but I wanted, I promised to talk about everything associated with it, um, with the move, and everything associated when, you know, life changes suddenly, but suddenly for something positive, and everything that you do to kind of go to that next step. So with these last three episodes, starting tonight, I'm going to navigate you through the process. So tonight, the first thing is um, that we're going to talk about and the whole basis and premise of our episode is emotions, dealing with the emotions that come behind the power move. And let me tell you guys, it is Wednesday, it is hump day, but this feels like the longest week Ever, just with everything that has been going on, how quickly things are moving, how slowly other things are moving. And my emotions have been all over the place. And I'm going to be completely honest, and I always said I would keep these as transparent moments as we wind down in the power move because I pray that what I'm sharing and experiencing is definitely going to um, be motivation and encouragement um, and even confirmation to some that everything is okay. So yesterday, I admit on Internet radio that I broke down. I had an emotional day where I just wanted to cry, and I did cry. (laughs) And it was a thing where I finally embraced how I was feeling without being strong. And I know a lot of people say, oh, Angel, and you guys may get this a lot, oh, wow, you're so strong. You always can do everything. You're so poised. You're so professional. You always have it under control. You can come up with a plan and a strategy on the fly. You're so focused. And yes, all of those things are true. You guys noticed I threw in a couple of extra, um, a couple of extra compliments there. <laughs> all right, but all of those things are true. But at the end of the day, a lot of it is not true. The strength is that it comes from my spirituality. The strength comes from you know this relationship that I'm building with God, this personal relationship that I have with God, or whomever you may you know um, worship, you know. You have to have that. You have to have that faith. You have to know where you're going to find that comfort and that retreat. You know, we talked a lot on this show about, you know, what does your space say? How does that space, you know, uh, allow you to react? And I have not been really focusing on my practices that I share with everyone. Um, I have not been having my delicious candle burning. I have not had a glass of wine. I have not just had a moment of silence where my mind's not racing and I'm just relaxed and I'm relaxing, having a moment for myself. I have not been doing that since I started to deal with this exit from corporate America. Well, It took a toll on me. I have not been making that time for me, and I broke down. I cried. I expressed how upset I was. I I am, not was. I still am upset. I expressed how upset I am. I expressed how I know that the decision to leave was the best decision for me to make just by a course of events. And then just looking at things that are happening Noun and how quickly they're happening and how so many people are reaching out and 
sharing feelings and expressions that I didn't know that they had, you know, about my ability or how I've helped or just that confidence, that extra boost of confidence that that I at this point need. And I, I hate using the word I. I always feel like it's selfish. So this is a difficult conversation for me to have, but I'm sharing and expressing, you know, um, what I'm going through in terms of emotions and dealing with it and embracing it. So I apologize if it comes off self-centered because that's not the case, but I want to share in real life life, what is happening and what that emotion looks like and what it feels like and how I'm getting through. So with it, it was just, gosh, I'm angry. I'm angry that, you know, I was told when I was prepared to have a nice relaxing weekend after countless hours of work for 32 days straight and the travel, and I was just ready to prepare and see, you know, old friends and family and all that I had not seen since I relocated from the Dallas uh, Metroplex to how it just ruined everything to where I had to sit down, I had to strategize, I had to think. My entire weekend was ruined, and I was mad. But I never expressed it because I had to stay poised. I had to try to focus. But I was mad. I was mad. How dare someone come in and ruin something personal that I've been looking so forward to, something that was going to give me that peace and that comfort. And they just ruined it with this surprise that was unwarranted. You know, so I was mad. I finally embraced that. I finally was able to say it out loud. I'm saying it out loud here publicly. I'm mad that my weekend was ruined. I'm even more upset that I feel, and I'm praying that it's just basic miscommunication, but I don't think it was, but praying how I feel that some of the things I was being asked to do was taken for granted that I'm always a team player, that I never really say no. But some of the things that were being requested was like, what? Like, I'm not leaving on my own accord. I'm not leaving because I went out and sought a new job and am leaving because I'm moving to a new job. I'm leaving because of the options that were presented. And once I had that clarity and looked at everything that was in front of me, I did what was best for my career personally. So I'm mad. I'm mad that my weekend was ruined when I was told about this situation. I'm mad that I'm being taken, I feel that I'm being taken for granted and being asked to do and was being asked to do something that, Really? You know, I cannot, I hate to be so urban, but really to come out saying, really? <laughs> you know, I'm mad. I am just mad. I'm mad that everyone in the organization, as they're finding out, are shocked, and I'm having to constantly repeat myself. And while, you know, my, my friend, my sorority sister makes it so per- perfect. She's such a good therapist. But she makes it so perfect when she's like, no one's questioning the decision that I made. What everyone's questioning is, how did we get to this point? But because I was getting asked so many times and repeating myself so often, it was started feeling like everyone was coming to me. Well, it was not, not that at all. It was just... People wanted answers like, what happened? How did we get to this point so suddenly? What, what's going on? The same questions that I have for myself, the same questions that I'm asking, others were asking me, and it was hard. It was hard. So all of that just came over me, and I just cried. And then once the tears started flowing, then the doubt and, you know, well, did I make the right decision? Well, could I have just been miserable in this job and looked for something else? Oh, you know, should I, should I really go after my business desires? Should I? And it was all of the should I, should I, hmm, well, maybe I should do this, and then questioning everything. So then 
the emotions set in again where I got mad at myself for questioning because I prayed about it. I said I heard the voice of God. I told you guys on Monday the several points of confirmation. So now I'm mad because I'm doubting that I heard the voice of God to tell me this was the right thing, you know, because it all was just crashing down. So I'm even more upset. I'm crying harder, and I'm just like, I need a break. And then on top of that, the bow wants to have a real conversation. And it's like, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Nothing else is going to happen on this day. You know, it was just, and I'm sure just because of the emotion, just because of what was there, everything was magnified. Everything was magnified unnecessarily. So I'm sharing all of that. I'm sharing this personal experience. I'm sharing this emotion because if you are in a position where you're doing that power move, you know, whether it was planned or not planned, and you're like, you know what, it's just time, you're never going to be ready. It's never going to be exact and work out perfectly and run smoothly. You are going to have those moments where you're going to, you know, question yourself, or you're going to break down, where you're going to say, what in the world? And you're going to have those moments. And I'm happy that I had, I finally had it. I'm happy that I finally had it this early in the game. <laughs> I'm so happy, and I'm happy that I'm able to come here and broadcast live and share this is the emotion that I just went through 24 hours ago, literally 24 hours ago, and I'm sharing it here. So I know what you all are wondering. I know what you all are asking. I'm asking the same question, like, girl, how were you a mess? How were you a complete basket case 24 hours ago, and now you're sharing on the internet radio show with a smile on your face and excited to be sharing. Like, what's wrong with you? So first and foremost, there's no illegal substances here. <laughs> you know, I always say that because um, one of the ways of me and my close friends joke, like, are you on something? Like, what's going on? <laughs> no, it's called the natural high. Because the thing about it, and when I come here and I share, you know, during the um, three months that we've been on air, I've shared a lot of personal situations. I've shared, you know, where I was when I was at my lowest, how I came out of it, you know, talked about therapy, talked about journaling, talked about, you know, sharing, owning your truth. Well, because of that, because of those past experiences, I've built up the strength and the character to be able then just 24 short hours later to say, okay, I'm ready. I'm prepared. I embrace the emotions. That was the first of many emotional days and emotional breakdowns that I am going to have. But now here I am because I went to that sacred place. I found that solitude. So I talk about your space. The one thing that I did as I'm driving home and I talked to my sorority sister and she gave a lot of words of wisdom and I text back and forth to the bow of, hey, when you're back in town, we'll get together. Not a problem, but just not tonight before I do anything and take frustration out inappropriately towards him. Didn't talk to my family. Didn't talk to certain people who needed something from me, not in a negative way, but I didn't coach anyone on my direct sales team. I didn't do anything. It was a day that I recognized I needed an angel day. So when you're going through those emotions, and you don't have to have a whole day because I only had a couple of hours. And when I got home, I calmed myself by doing the shower. You know, you always have that calming effect after you do that evening shower. And I'm normally I like to um, put lotions on and have different scents like lavender. This is my favorite scent for the night. It helps me sleep well. Um, or eucalyptus or, you know, different scents um, that you can put on just to, kind of, to calm you. And um, I did not burn my, my um, candle, and I definitely did not pour a glass of wine, <laughs> you know, because that could have probably added to the emotion that I was feeling as a depressant. But I came, I showered, 
I connected my Bluetooth, my phone Bluetooth to my Bluetooth speaker in my bedroom, and I just started to worship. It sounds so easy, but I went right down to um, – I listen to Amazon Music, and um, you know, and I turned it on, and I put on the Martin Gospel Station, and I, you know, first I just flipped through the songs I didn't want to hear, <laughs> and then we got to one of my favorite songs, which is um, "Gracefully Broken" by Tasha Cobbs Leonard. It's one of my favorite songs. It's a beautiful. song song, um, beautiful song. If you have not heard that, I highly recommend. No, no advertisement. I'm not endorsed by Tasha Cobbs Leonard, but it's a beautiful song, Gracefully Broken. And when I got to that song and I just closed my eyes, I didn't have any lights on. I don't want anyone to think that I was in a depressed state. I just was meditating. And I just listened to those words of that song. And then that led me to go to other songs. One of my, I call it my release song, is um, Safe in His Arms, and especially the rendition by Vicki Winans, which is so beautiful. So I went to YouTube and I put that on. And um, I just worshiped. And I prayed, not a lot, not a long time. And I just said, God, bring me comfort. And I just listened and I just meditated on those songs. And for some reason, it's not a some reason, it's just how God works. This is why your spirituality is so important when you are looking at living your best life. You may not believe in God, whatever you higher being that you believe in. Your spirituality is so important and critical to you finding that balance. And I, like I said, I'm a fairly new Christian. <laughs> you know, I haven't been, you know, yes, my dad is a minister, but I have not been fully engaged in church all 25-plus years of my life. <laughs> we know <laughs> we, I'm a little bit older than 25, but we're going to go ahead and, and stick with that, okay, 25-plus. <laughs> but all of that, this has always been within recent years, within the last two years to be exact of really walking down that spiritual path and finding that spirituality and building that relationship with God. So I'm not coming to you with that as someone that's that's been my life. No, this has been a two-year journey and growth and, and development and saying this, I'm seeing a difference. I'm seeing a positive impact. I'm seeing growth. And I just fell asleep. Because of that, whenever I just meditate and I clear my mind of everything, and then I'm just, and I pray, and I truly let it go. It took me a while to get to that point of praying and still worrying and carrying it on my shoulders and talking to everybody about it. Like, no, I get to a point where if I pray about it, if I say whatever, like, that's it. I don't need to talk about it anymore. I don't need to worry about it anymore. I prayed. And then it's amazing how when I've gotten to that point and how I've grown to that point and to where I am right now, it's amazing how you get such clarity in your answers. And I fell asleep. I fell asleep. I didn't eat dinner. I didn't do anything. I just fell asleep. And then I woke up, uh, I don't know how much longer later, you know, to turn off the music. My phone was actually dying. <laughs> yeah, because it wasn't charging. Turned off the music, um, turned on the television, um, you know, and I keep the television low. Sometimes the television likes to watch me while I'm sleeping overnight. <laughs> you know, um, but I thought I was awake, but the television ended up watching me. And it's so funny. And I told my mom, and my mom thinks it was hilarious. But I have um, an automated home, and I have um, the, the Amazon products in my home um, that came with this home that I bought. And um, in the middle of the night, I don't know what time it was. I don't know if something was on the television or what. But all of a sudden, my automated product <laughs> just spoke in the middle of the night. And um, 
and it woke me up because you know I, I, sometimes I listen to music um, from the the device, the the automated home device. I'll listen to music. So the last time I had listened to music, I had it turned up loud, and then I also use it as an alarm, so it'll ring for the alarm for me to get up in the morning. But um, it's just in the middle of the night, and she was answering a question. So I don't know if a commercial for the product on television, and it just so happened to pick it up, but the television was pretty low, so I'm not really sure how that would have happened. Oh, but it was just weird. <laughs> but And it woke me up because she was loud, and she was giving her advice. And, um, you know, and I wasn't afraid. I wasn't startled. I was just like, oh, you know, the, the name of the product. I was like, oh, she tripping. <laughs> You know, and then you guys, I feel like you guys really know my personality. So to hear me say something like, oh, she tripping, <laughs> you know how that would be, you know, something that I would say that's common. And I was like, and I was trying to wake myself up fully so I could see what was on the television and maybe, you know, it was something from the television that picked it up and, and made her answer. Um, but I wasn't afraid. I was calm. And I was just like, hmm. I wonder what she was agreeing with, you know, (laughs) because she was agreeing with whatever she was responding to. I didn't even know my device did stuff like that. I didn't even know that was a response that she could give. So I learned something new. But it was calmness, and I I told a girlfriend, and my girlfriend was like, I would have been asking that device, who are you talking to? (laughs) And I can't say the device name because if I say it, then, you know, she's going to respond to me while I'm broadcasting live. So I'm not going to say the device name, but it was just so funny. And um, so I just keep it in my mind because I don't think anything is coincidental. Um, No one was in my house, I don't think. If they did, they didn't take anything and they didn't harm me. <laughs> but um, it was just amazing. And I just fell right on back to sleep and went on, and the day was just fine. So I just took that as, okay, that was another confirmation because, like I told you guys, God knows I don't listen very well, and he knows he has to speak to me a lot. And um, the good idea, you know, um, that the device was confirming were a lot of ideas that I I have, Um, you know, things that we're going to be doing during these summer months, some goals that I want to accomplish. So when you're dealing with that emotion, and I'm sharing this story to all circle back to when you're dealing with the emotions that come along with making those power moves, find balance. And then when you least expect it, or from something that can catch you completely by surprise. You're going to get a confirmation. You're going to finally have your mind is going to be at ease. It's not going to be racing. And you can truly hear and see things with clarity. And sometimes when you're feeling that overwhelm, you know, hearing that from my device, at a time that I had that breakdown, at the time that I had to rely on my spirituality to meditate and pray and just clear, and just get in a completely silent, dark room and really call upon God to get me out of the space that I was heading in, the space that I was in, that I wouldn't go deeper so I can really say, what's next? You need to have that because once it happens, then boom. You get that motivated instantly. So that's why it's 24 hours later, and I'm able to stay here with a smile and excitement and and all. I was almost late for our show because I was researching one of the ideas that I had. Because in my head, all I hear is that's a good idea. I don't want anybody getting alarmed, thinking I'm going crazy. Okay, why angels hear voices, right? (laughs) That's definitely not it. But sometimes you and you're looking for that comfort or you need that comfort, you're seeking that clarity. And if you're a believer, I don't think anything is coincidental, <laughs> you know, but you definitely want to look at all of that. I don't want to sound crazy because I'm not I'm very clear. But I want you to embrace those moments of emotion. Find that clarity point. Find that area where you can have complete calmness. Listen 
and then go into action. Implement. Next week I'm going to talk to you guys about what I did to lay things out as to why I'm able to tell you, oh, over the next couple of months, this is what I'm going to be producing. I'm going to talk to you about action planning, what that looks like when you're making that power move, how to stick to that plan, how to be flexible and make adjustments with that plan. But you have to embrace the emotion. Embrace it. Last night, as I said earlier, was the first of many days, nights, hours that I'm going to have a complete breakdown, that I'm going to be questioning. But I always know when I get to that point, regardless of what it is, whether it's a power move or just anything in life, when I get to that point, I always know what that go-to is. Your space is important. Your space is sacred. Even if you, if you, if you have clutter, like you, you can't have a lot of clutter around because it, it causes chaos and confusion. So even if you just take one corner, if it's an itty-bitty corner, just enough for you to either sit on the floor or to sit on a stool, or you just to stand, you know. But just take that where it is just empty and clear or if you have a picture that you can look at or like with me, you know, my, my bedroom might have shoes all over the floor right now, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's a little cluttered. You know, my bed may be unmade. That, those are all signs and indications of what my mind is like because I always keep my shoes and boxes in the closet organized so it's easy for me to get to. I make my bed every morning. But for the simple fact that two things that I do all the time is not done and hasn't been done is truly an indication of where my mind has been. So I didn't come in and say, all right, let me straighten up, let me make this look a little bit more presentable and like how I normally have it. I just said, I'm just going to turn the light out. <laughs> I'm not going to have the light on. <laughs> I'm going to lay in the bed and pretend that this blanket is on this bed correctly. You know? <laughs> but I had to create that sacred space mentally for me. So even in the midst of that chaos, because the chaos was not going to give me the clarity, if I was looking at it, I wasn't going to be able to focus completely and meditate on praying and God and looking for the clarity and the answer to get out of that space. So I created it by just not turning the light on. I created it by, you know, laying in my special spot on my bed where I always get the most comfortable. And that's what you have to do. Your space is important. Your space has to spark that creativity and that calmness. It is important. I cannot reiterate that more or can't reiterate that enough, rather. It is important. So embrace the emotion. Be prepared for it to come. And just do it. It's okay. I think so many people going through anything in life, especially entrepreneurs, have those many moments where they just sit and cry and that they question. But they get out of that. Embrace it. Get out of it. Find your space. Keep that space sacred. Look at your spirituality. You know, whatever higher being that may be. Some people read their Bible. Some people, you know, praise and worship with music. Some people just need quiet and just pray. It doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong way to do it. But really look at what gives you calmness and peace. And that's going to be how you go out of the emotions. So just how everything worked out for me with this round one, <laughs> as I'm going through this power move, it's going to help me when I go through round two and go through round 222. The emotions don't always have to be sad. The emotions can also be when something is super successful and I'm on a high and I'm excited and bouncing off the walls. I'm going to have to calm and bring that down too. <laughs> All right, so I hope tonight's, Story and testimony is inspiration 
to all of you as we're making this power move together. I can't wait to talk to you guys on Monday night, which in the U.S. is a holiday. It's Memorial Day. So after we've all eaten a lot of barbecue here in the U.S. or going to the family cookouts, um, just join me because we're going to start talking about doing the work and the action planning and what that looks like and how to stick to it. So have a fabulous rest of the week. Happy Memorial Day for everyone in the U.S. And I shall talk to you next week. Good night. Thank you for tuning in. Remember, you define your own success. Believe you can do it? Build a solid foundation? Know your circle and soar. Until next time.